How's it going, everyone? I just listened to the Airbnb Q4 2020 earnings call, and I just wanted to talk about some of the key takeaways that I got from the call and give some of my own insights. So let's get right into it. Franceschi started off the call by giving a quick run through of how the company was founded. I'm not going to get into the details that he got into, but he talked about how they started off by offering an air bed and breakfast where they hosted three guests. And then he talked about how through that experience, he learned that human connection is what makes Airbnb so special. So even now to this day, they're still focused on delivering human connection through hosting. Brian then went through a summary of fiscal year 2020 and some of the financials. For fiscal year 2020, their revenue was $3.4 billion, down 30% year over year, which was really good because at one point they were forecasting a negative 50% year over year or more. So 30% year over year was really good. And then for Q4 2020, they were down 22% year over year compared to Q4 2019 which also is really good because, you know, we're still in the midst of a pandemic and there were additional lockdown measures that happened in quarter four. Their adjusted EBITDA for fiscal year 2020 also came in higher compared to fiscal year 2019, despite having lower revenue compared to 2019. And their adjusted EBITDA for Q4 2020 also was higher than Q4 2019, also despite having lower revenue. Looking to the future, he said that there is a lot of pent-up demand that travel will come back when restrictions are lifted and borders are reopened. So in 2021, their single priority is to prepare for the coming travel rebound. To do this, they're gonna do a couple things. They're going to run marketing campaigns to attract guests and recruit hosts. They recently launched a large-scale marketing campaign called Made Possible by Host which includes real photos of real guests on real Airbnb trips. They'll be offering tools and education for new hosts in order to help them get started more easily. They will be scaling up their customer service department ahead of demand. They will improve their search functionality by giving prospective guests the option to input flexible dates whenever they search. He mentioned that in 2021, almost 40% of people searching on Airbnb have been flexible with either their date or location of their stay. So flexible date search functionality should be a very popular feature. All right, so let's move on to the questions. So for the questions, I'm just gonna summarize what the question is about. And if you wanna read the entire question word for word, then I'm just gonna post it on the screen and you can pause the video and read it. So the first question, the analyst asks if they are seeing good retentions from new users. And he also asks a second question if they are seeing high booking rates due to certain regions or if the booking rates are spread out broad-based. For the retention question, Franceschi responds that they are seeing continued strong retention because people are finding new use cases to use Airbnb like work from home and local traveling. So basically he's saying that newer use cases have especially high retention. For the question about booking rates, in relation to certain regions. He responds by saying that the regions that have historically high domestic travel are the ones that are seeing better resiliency compared to the ones that rely on foreign travel. The next analyst asked a question that was a bit confusing. So he's basically asking if he sees people, especially people who work from home, use both sides of Airbnb, meaning if he sees more people using their house to rent on Airbnb while they vacation or work in another Airbnb. So in other words, he's asking if people are hosting Airbnb while being a guest at the same time. Brian Chesky responds by saying that travel will come back, but when it does come back, it's gonna look different than it did before. He says that a world of Zoom is where more people can work from home. A world where more people can work from home is a world where people can work from any home. So people are taking longer term stays, like one month plus, and some people are taking extended weekend trips, like three or four weekends in a row, because they don't have to be in a physical office. 
So as guests use Airbnb more often, this also means that there will be more empty homes. So yes, it's basically an opportunity for hosts to live a more nomadic lifestyle. He ends with um, a statistic that says in 2019, 23% of hosts were former guests. So as guests use Airbnb more, there is an opportunity to convert them to become hosts. So the next host asks if they can talk about their strategy on how they are planning to get more hosts and listings, and if there are any opportunities to make more revenue with the existing hosts and listings. Brian Chesky responds to this by first saying that they have 4 million hosts, 90% of them are individual hosts, meaning non-corporations, and the vast majority of those hosts did not need to be acquired, so they just all come organically. To answer his question though, in order to get more hosts and listings, they are running their Made Possible by Host campaign. They are targeting people that are going through a life transition, like people who bought a new house, lost their jobs, retired, or maybe their kids moved out of their house. And once they come to the Airbnb website, they want to increase their conversion rate of people becoming hosts. One of the things that they learned is that the easier the process, and the more support that they offer, the higher the conversion rate. So they want to make sure that it's super easy to become a host. They want them to be able to become a host in less than 10 minutes. And if they need help, customer service will be there. They will even match them to an existing host in order to support them into becoming a new host. The next analyst asks how they plan on increasing marketing efficiency. Brian Chesky starts off by talking about how they stopped all marketing spend in 2020, but they still saw around 95% of the traffic compared to 2019, which probably means that a lot of the money that they spent on marketing was probably wasteful in 2019. So they're not gonna make that mistake again. The CFO also responds by saying how performance marketing will still be used, but they will be more stringent when it comes to the ROI attached to the performance marketing. So I had to look up what performance marketing meant. And basically performance marketing is when a company pays a marketing firm, but only if that marketing firm can prove that they are delivering results from their campaign. It sounds really good on paper, but I guess Airbnb must feel like those results are not super accurate. So they want to be more selective when it comes to using performance marketing. He moves on to say that sales and marketing expense will be less than 2019 levels. This is really good for me to hear. I wanted to actually hear this exact line. So the fact that he said it was really good for me. All right, next question. The analyst asks if they have any margin targets for 2021. Brian Chesky responds by saying how COVID has made Airbnb a better company, more focused and more disciplined. And then the CFO adds in by saying how some of their fixed costs have been removed and will not be coming back. And additionally, their variable costs will also be lowered in 2021 compared to 2019. So their target EBITDA would be 30% margins or greater in the long term. They're not sure about what the revenue will be in 2021, so they're not sure what the margin is for 2021. I'm really loving the CFO's response here. He's saying how their fixed costs are lowered, meaning they're like general and administrative, their research and development, and then their variable costs will also be lowered, which is their sales and marketing. So basically their expenses are gonna be significantly lower than 2019 and 2021, maybe in 2022 as well, so we'll see. Next question, the analysts ask if they think that a lot of hosts have stopped hosting due to COVID and will return once COVID is over. Brian Chesky didn't really answer this question directly, but he did say that when hosts deactivate, they, they tend to reactivate. He also mentioned that when the travel rebound comes, they expect hosts to do very well. And when hosts are doing very well and they have high occupancy, they typically add another listing or they tell their friends to start a listing. So there is basically a positive compounding effect when hosts do well. The CFO tries to answer the question directly by saying that there wasn't really a significant number of deactivations in Q3 compared to Q4. The next analyst asks how summer travel is looking compared to last year and if the Olympics are going to be a big deal this year. 
The CFO responds by basically saying that they don't really know how summer travel is looking compared to last year because people are booking in shorter windows due to COVID, basically due to the uncertainty of COVID, which makes sense. Uh, Brian Chesky responds that if the Olympics will have fans, then it will be very good for the Airbnb Tokyo market. He says that people also miss traveling compared to every leisure activity according to their own surveys. And people also miss traveling specifically because they want to spend time with their friends and family, which also would be a really good indicator for Airbnb success. For the next question, the analyst asks, how important is the experience side of the business to Airbnb's overall strategy? And also how important is their hotel section of their business? Brian Chesky responds that experiences are very important to Airbnb's overall strategy. Guests on Airbnb actually like experiences more than homes. More guests leave five-star reviews on experiences compared to staying at homes. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I didn't know that experiences was so popular on Airbnb that a lot of people enjoy experiences even more than staying at Airbnbs. That's probably something that a lot of people don't pay attention to when they analyze Airbnb and probably a uh, under-realized asset for the Airbnb stock. So to answer the other question, Brian Chesky talked about how Airbnb acquired Hotel Tonight, but in 2020, they basically scaled back their investment in Hotel Tonight, but not entirely. He gives the reasons on why they re acquired Hotel Tonight. He says that most hotels have less than 50% occupancy. So hotels are important because they never want a guest to come to Airbnb and leave without being able to find something. So hotels are there to fill that gap. And then because hotels have less than a 50% occupancy, Airbnb has the ability to fill that demand. So it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship. The next analyst asks, how confident are they they, that they have the right team and resources available to handle the rebound given that they cut expenses so much. Franceschi responds, the best people have moved to the most important problems, so they are much more efficient now. And also because of all their cost cutting, they are less divided as a company. So instead of having multiple marketing, multiple technology, multiple operations department, now they just have one marketing group, one technology group, and one operations group. Additionally, they are wrapping up customer service ahead of demand. So he's saying that he's very confident that they can handle the upcoming rebound. The next analyst asks, how sustainable are the new use cases that they are seeing due to the travel trends and COVID. Franceschi says that although they can't predict the future, they do think that the new use cases are sustainable. They don't think it's a fad because the new use cases are fueled by technology. Next question, what are the steps that they are taking to simplify the guest experience? Franceschi responds again, talking about conversion rates that the easier they make something, the higher the conversion rates are. So for guests in particular, they also want to reduce the steps to need it in order to book a place. So they want to make it easy to log on, verify, and book. And the addition of adding the flexible booking experience should also help with simplifying the guest experience. One of the added benefits of the flexible booking is that Airbnb can direct stays to place that have more supply because you know the flexible booking not only is it going to be flexible for dates it's also going to be flexible for places as well the next analyst asked if airbnb anticipates that the competitive environment will ramp up in intensity brian chesky basically says no he doesn't think so he says that airbnb is a different space compared to the competition it's a platform that is made specifically for individual hosts while other platforms are more focused on the professional host. 70% of the hosts leave reviews for guests after their stay. So as a result, their guests have reviews. Other platforms don't have guests that have reviews. I thought his response was actually pretty interesting. As a host myself, I do feel more comfortable when I host guests that have reviews. And I don't see myself moving on to other platforms because I basically have like 100% occupancy already. So there's not really a point for me to have my listing on multiple platforms. And then I also see a benefit of having all of my reviews on one platform instead of spread over throughout many platforms. So I agree with him that I don't think there is really too much to worry about in terms of competition. So for the next question, an analyst asks, how do you help individual hosts improve their level of service? 
And he also asked another question, how do you see your payments platform evolving? To answer the question, Brian Chesky says that they plan to offer more host education. One of the things that he brought up is that they recently hired somebody from Disney. Her name is Catherine Powell, and she's going to be head of experiences. So one of the things that she did at Disney is she offered something called Disney Academy. So basically they're going to be offering something similar at Airbnb. And additionally, they're going to have a host advisory board that will help with Airbnb on updating their tools. And they will be providing more advanced like pricing tools and calendar tools. So to answer the payment processing question, Brian Chesky talked about how in 2019, they processed $70 billion of transactions in 40 currencies and over 220 countries and regions, which is a very unique capability for Airbnb and competitions they don't have this capability. And having this capability allows them to basically keep their costs lower and increase customer satisfaction. The CFO also mentioned that they see an opportunity to decrease costs by offering more payment methods, especially if both parties can deal in the same local currency. The next analyst asked, why do mature markets like the US do so well compared to the evolving markets. Brancheski responds that the biggest gap between the mature markets and the evolving markets is awareness. So Airbnb just needs to increase their awareness. And once awareness increases, evolving markets will use Airbnb more. So that's why they're investing in brand marketing. And again, they're made possible by host marketing. He also mentioned that Japan has been doing well recently and also Mexico and Brazil have been doing pretty well recently. The next question asks if they are planning to increase fees in the future. The CFO responds to this saying that they want to provide good value for both the host and the guest. So basically for now, they don't plan to raise fees. The next question is, what is the mix of new users when you look at the new travel trends like non-urban, domestic, and whole homes? And will the new users be the ones that drive future growth? They respond by saying that they're seeing a good number of new guests, but still mostly the existing guests are using Airbnb. And the next question is, how do they plan to increase occupancy? CFO responds that occupancy might not be the best measure of success because like if you're a host, your main goal might not be occupancy. It might just be to offset your costs when you're not using it during specific times of the year. And then for the last question, the analysts ask if they are seeing urban areas get more bookings. Brian Chesky responds that 40% of the nights are still urban. So it's still a very important part of the business. So it's not like urban is doing terribly, it's just that the non-urban areas are growing faster than the urban areas. All right, so that was the last question. So some of my own thoughts, I pretty much don't have anything bad to say about the stock. I think that they are doing all the right things. They're making all the right moves. They are controlling their costs. They're being disciplined with their spending, but at the same time, they are spending money in all the right places. They're marketing costs and their fixed costs in 2021 is gonna be lower than their cost in 2019. And this is despite launching a major marketing campaign and also ramping up their customer service ahead of demand in 2021. They did end up losing a lot of money from a net income perspective, but most of that was just one-time expenses due to the IPO. From an EBITDA perspective, they basically ended up breaking even in the fourth quarter, which is pretty impressive considering that we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Also, after listening to Brian Chesky talk about the competition and how he sees Airbnb as differentiated from the competition, I can see how Airbnb is way ahead of its competition in terms of capability and just general network effect. I guess the only thing that I'm worried about is that they are not able to forecast their 2021 revenues, which is completely understandable, but it does make it difficult to value the stock. Either way, I'm in it for the long run. I have 115 shares. Right now, the stock is trading at $200, so I actually hope that the stock falls from here so that I can buy more. I plan to do one of these every quarter. It helps me with my own due diligence, and hopefully it brings value to other people watching it. So that's it for this video. In my next video, I'm going to be doing an Airbnb hosting video about how to attract long-term guests to your Airbnb. 
I expect that video to come out sometime next week or so, so stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.